OK, thank you, everybody, for coming. Um, I'm Max from IBM. And today I have the great privilege, really, to uh, present uh, with uh, Maria. And let me start by saying first thing is that everybody here, if you're coming to hopefully learn something about Bosch, uh, you know a little bit about Bosch. I'm looking for Dimitri. I can't see him. But anyway, that's OK. <laughs> he is the brain of Bosch. We all know that. But the heart and soul is Maria, believe me. So <laughs> I'm here in good hands. And hopefully, you'll learn a lot from what we have to talk about. So uh, we're going to talk about Bosch in it. So it's going to be kind of a back and forth, a pair presentation with uh, my colleague Maria. And uh, we'll get started. There is a live demo. Hopefully, everything works. We prayed to the gods, so should be OK. But we'll see where it goes. So first is, what is Bosch? I mean, it's, it's an it's a easy question in some ways to answer, but also very difficult. But the important thing, I think, is imp you know, especially Bosch in it, uh, is listed here. So you think of Bosch as an agnostic tool for deploying infrastructure in, uh, in deploying large systems. Bosch in it is the bootstrapping of that. So Bosch in it is that first VM. How do you get that first VM started so that you can do the subsequent um, deployments that you need. The other important thing is that, as you know, Bosch is agnostic. So you could, do, you could use Bosch to deploy not only CF, but also Concourse CI, which a lot of people have discussed, and any other kind of uh, large scale cloud uh, you know, projects or systems. So this is the important thing. So Bosch in it is new. Uh, and this is going to be pretty much the purpose and the, the, the topic of this talk today. So as we mentioned, there is a demo. And Maria is going to start it, because it takes about five to 10 minutes. So hopefully, get started. So go ahead. Um, all right. So let's get down to business and start our demo. So we're going to use uh, Bosch init to deploy our initial director VM to AWS infrastructure. So we're going to run Bosch init um, deploy command. And we're going to pass in the manifest file. So notice that the only input that it takes is a manifest file. So Bosch init is a CLI tool. It's using cloud pro provider interface. So cloud provider interface, which is CPI, um, is a software that implements specific API uh, that can manage resources in certain infrastructure. Uh, so CPI is packaged as a release. And first thing that Bosch Unit is doing is installing the CPI locally. And then it's using the CPI to uh, create resources in infrastructure. After VM and disks are created, it configures uh, those VMs uh, as specified in deployment manifest. So we're going to take a look at deploying manifest a little bit later in more detail. But um, let's take a look um, what are the main components of Bosch in it. So stem cell, release, and deploy manifest are three main components um, of Bosch that is used to uni uniquely identify any deployment. Uh, stem cell is an operating system image. Um, it's used. Uh, by Bosch to create VMs from. And release is a software that defines um, what services are going to run on that VM and what dependencies uh, they need. Deploy manifest is a configuration file. Um, so let's take a look at deploy manifest. So it, it's a YAML file. And uh, with Bosch in it, we try to be consistent with um, format that uh, Bosch Director is using um, to manage any other deployments. So it's using the same manifest format as Bosch Director. And it has similar VM and disk lifecycle. Uh, and also, it specifies uh, stem cells and releases in easier way. So. Let's take a look at that deployment manifest that we use to, to run our demo. So there are several parts in deployment manifest. And first, you can see there are releases. 
uh, which is software that we're going to install in a VM. And you can see that um, we're going to install Bosch Director, and we're going to install UA. UA is um, user authentication uh, service, and we're going to use it uh, to manage our authentication to Bosch. And since we're deploying to AWS, we're going to also use AWS CPI release. Next, we have resource pool section that defines uh, what type of VM we're going to deploy and the stem cell that we're going to use to uh, create our VM from. So next sections, networks, disk pools, and jobs are all stay consistent with Bosch Director. Um, the last bit is uh, cloud provider section. Uh, so this one is unique to Bosch in it, and it basically defines um, some properties that are going to be used to bootstrap our VM. Um, so yeah, let's talk more about the history and why we decided to rewrite um, existing tool. So we used to, to have a Bosch Micro CLI plugin, which was a gem that was installed uh, along with the Bosch CLI. And it was uh, used to create that initial director VM, and uh, we called it MicroBosch. So that tool worked well, but it came with certain limitations. And Max here experienced those limitations, so he can tell us more about them. Thank you, Maria. So um, let me be clear. I work for IBM and large company. And when I say, when Maria said, I experienced a limitation, really by proxy. So there are people here, actually, Ben and Jimmy, are sitting in the room, that actually experience this every day because these guys are running Bluemix. And of course, maybe, maybe many of you have experienced similar limitations. So I think part of the biggest problem that we had, and this came about like last year, discussing with Dimitri and Maria and various people, is that Bluemix, for instance, had to fork Bosch because we have our own cloud call uh, software, and of course we use other clouds like OpenStack, but we needed to include a CPI for that. And of course, you know, that cloud, maybe other people don't care. So we had to fork it. Well, once you fork, that means that you now have to manage an external piece of code that you know, is evolving, and of course Bosch is evolving, so how do you keep it merged? So it's a real pain in the you know, where. So how do you kind of deals with, deal with that uh, in Bosch in it? One of the big things that we did is we externalized the CPIs. So now you no longer, as you, if you remember when Maria was showing you the manifest, there is a section where you can specify the CPI. That CPI exists as a binary. It's a completely different piece of code. It can be. And it can be written in whatever language you want as well. So you're going to see a little bit more of that. So it makes it a little bit better for development, testing, and so on. Um, another part was that before, you couldn't really combine different releases. And as you saw, if you remember from the demo, uh, Maria's demo, the manifest, included not only the Bosch director, but also UAA, which is a component of Cloud Foundry. And UAA can be useful for other things, because this is where you'll have, essentially, the users for uh, your Bosch director. So by combining those two releases, and of course, you could have other releases. So if you wanted to add concourse to the, pack, to, to the mix, you could also do that. Um, Another important one was that the installation was difficult. Um, because the Bosch director is written in Ruby, uh, and of course the CPI code was embedded as part of it, you now had uh, essentially have to install Ruby into your, um, you know, wherever you wanted to use Bosch and the CLI as well. So it, it, made, it made things very difficult. Everything it was written in Ruby, which is great to some extent, but also difficult because of the fact of the pollution of the gems, for instance, and certainly startup time is not as good as what we have now. Um, we think it's all fixed because in some ways, uh, Bosch in it is a rewrite. But is it? Not fully, but almost there, right? So one thing uh, we want to talk about specifically is that the CPIs, uh, for instance, at IBM, we are rewriting uh, our CPI uh, in, uh, in Go. Uh, for the software uh, um, cloud. There are other CPIs, so we've externalized the different CPIs. Uh, that makes it basically uh, a better separation of concerns. 
So the, the CPIs versus the director, and even if you write your CPI in Ruby, uh, your Ruby uh, environment for your CPI can be very different than your director environment for your CPI. Those are very specific things that we've experienced, pain that we've experienced, that we've now essentially solved. Um, another part right. of this is the leaner stem cells. Um, <coughs> Yeah, you're going to have to keep your head down because, yeah, <laughs> thank you. Um, so, go ahead. Yeah, so because we, we um, watching it can take arbitrary number of releases and install them on initial VM, uh, that means that we no longer need to include um, CPI release and watch release into the stem cell. So before we included uh, those releases solely for the purpose, of uh, deploying that initial uh, board director VM. So now this can be removed, that makes our stem cells lighter, and um, we can independently update those um, stem cells whenever there is operating system update required, and um, update board release independently when there is new, like, director changes. Um, so, we have now releases that we can install several releases. So you could see in the demo that we specified uh, Bosch and we install it alongside with UA. So uh, because we can install several, several releases, we can like extend with the features of um, existing releases by integrating them with um, some other releases on, on that initial VM. So that wasn't possible before for that initial VM. Um, also, it opens door uh, for installing um, multiple CPIs on that VM, and we no longer tied to um, CPI that uh, our first VM is created on, so we can use any CPI. And uh, we can now create uh, VMs with specific purpose, like for example, uh, Jumpbox, uh, if if you want to deploy VM that doesn't need uh, Bosch director maintains, but at the same time you want to utilize uh, Bosch features like deployment manifest and dependency management, uh, then you can use uh, Bosch init tool to deploy that VM. So we uh, rewrote our Bosch init CLI in Go, and that gives us several advantages. So now it's distributed as standalone binary. It's very easy to install it compared to like previous to Bosch Micro CLI plugin, which was a gem. You had to like resolve all these gem conflicts. Uh, so now you just download it, put it in your path and run it. And it's faster to start up, it feels more responsive. And as always, um, with free writing, it allows us to address some technical depth. Um, there also were made some more improvements. It's more item important. It has more consistent UI. And uh, there is a cleaner separation of deployment workflow and infrastructure management. So, yeah, yep. Mark, Max has had experience developing CPI for software, so he can talk more about it. Sure, thank you, Maria. So, of course, you know, rewriting the CPI. Um, was also happening at the same time as some of those Bosch in it. Um, you know, one of the best programmer I know, uh, Dimitri, um, actually would like a warden CPI, which you can also use. So I look at that and essentially pattern uh, a new CPI after this, which you could, you, it's all open source, so you can also look at that. And I think the important thing to remember is this following picture. Um, <laughs> You can think of this as a Russian director <laughs> shelling out and talking to the CPI. And what, what's happening, it's actually calling uh, to this binary. So this entire part of the CPI, just I'll explain it later, um, is the CPI, so it's a binary. And the director just talked to it and back and forth uh, shelling out. So that's pretty much what you now have. And it, can, you know, it has to be in the same uh, you know, uh, VM, but that's kind of what happens. Now, to implement your CPI, you really just have to implement the methods that I listed. Of course, it's, it's more complicated than that, uh, naturally. Each one of those methods have parameters, and they return some values. 
but pretty much that's all you have to implement. And actually, you don't have to implement all of them. You really have to implement a subset of these essential ones. So pretty much create stem cells, delete stem cells, create VM, delete VM, has VM, and so on. So once you implement those, you can actually start using your CPI. And of course, as you need more features, you'll have to implement more of it. That's pretty much what the new idea. So I think you know, we're encouraging people to, to get to this. So Maria is going to talk about some of the CI update that we did also. Right. So because we uh, separated our CPIs, we can now independently manage um, and maintain and produce a CPI release version, Bosch release version, and stem cells. So that allows us to split our one big CI pipeline into several pipelines. And we use concourse. Uh, so we start switching to that. And concourse actually can be deployed with Bosch in it. And we are planning to generalize that uh, CI pipeline that we use to test our CPIs. And CPI developers can use it to, to run tests against their CPI. Oh. oh, sorry. So, of course, I think part of what we're trying to do here is to encourage more, right? More collaboration, more companies joining. And we can't really speak for Microsoft and Google, but we know that they've been experimenting with it. Certainly at IBM, we have multiple CPIs, and you're going to see those coming. Um, I've got a team from China here that we're going to be working on planning for releasing some of this. So we're going to be adopting this whole Bosch in it very soon. Uh, Hopefully, a thousand more will bloom too. So we have to go back to the demo. All Hopefully, right. everything worked. Yeah. <laughs> she promised. Uh, so here we deployed uh, initial Bosch Director VM. So you can see that first we install CPI locally, then we use that CPI to create our resources in infrastructure. So we created VM, we created disks. And we installed all required dependencies. And we started our service, which is Bosch Director. And we put it alongside with UA. So now we can use UA to log in into Director. So let's do that. Um, so we have UA configuration that um, we can use. So here's the user. Let's use it. <laughs> Uh, so our UA is configured with custom uh, certificate, so I need to pass in uh, my SSL cert. Uh. All right, so these are the prompts from UA. And here we are. Cool. Yeah, so what you're seeing here is not only the new VM being deployed, the different releases, including UA, being deployed using the UA now to log in. So if you know anything about Bosch, this should be kind of, I don't say mind-blowing, but it should be interesting to you. <laughs> All right, I have one person saying it's mind-blowing. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you switch to the side. Oh, yeah. OK, so to finish up, um, what's next, right? I mean, in many ways, uh, Dimitri has set up Bosch IO. Um, if you don't know anything about Bosch IO, you're interested in Bosch, you owe yourself, just go to it, just check it out. It's Bosch.io, right? Um, certainly, send us feedback if you're trying Bosch in it. Um, we want to hear from you. Uh, email Dimitri, so right there. Don't spam him, but feel free to spam him. And then <laughs> he'll respond. And then I think the other thing is they, they've both started, the whole team started Bosch Notes, which is where a lot of the ideas of what's coming up um, you know, is being discussed. So feel free to go there. Um, the one thing we mentioned besides thanking you is this important one. So again, I'm IBM. I'm working with Pivotal. I spent a lot of time with them. Uh, and what you should know is a lot of this doesn't start without a team. So a lot of them are in the back. Uh, of course, I mentioned Dimitri multiple times, but there's Chris also who did a lot of the work on this. Um, you know, Fun, unfortunately, left uh, Pivotal, but he, he's been instrumental to this. And then uh, we have uh, my Fabio impersonator, impersonator, Carl, who also did quite a bit of the work on this. So in many ways, I'm sitting in front of you, but 
we owe it to them. So thank you for your time. And I think we have some time for questions, so. Okay, yes. Ah, so the question is, so if, are probably, there plans to rewrite yeah, yeah. The, yeah. the CLI? Go ahead. I guess the question to our project manager, Dimitri, but yeah. um, maybe Dimitri, you want to add to this? Yes, eventually. <laughs> <laughs> Other questions? We have a little bit of time. Yes? So we completely delegating to UA uh, our authentication mechanism. So whatever UA uh, gives you, you can re you use it. Sorry, did I answer your question? <laughs> Any other questions? Ah, yes. uh, I see that uh, you mentioned that uh, you can use different releases and deploy different posts in it, uh, different jobs. Does this mean that we can use the very same jobs deployed by posts later on with cloud funding? For example, in UAA, what you mentioned, we can use it through cloud funding also? Uh, well, actually, yeah, cloud funding CF releases using UA. So uh, we had to extract UA into separate release to, go to integrate it with Bosch. Yeah. And remember, it can be any release, right? So like, for instance, Concourse or any other project like Red Porous, you know, as long as there's a release for that product, you can, you can add it. Okay. Uh, so repeating the question is, can you use Bosch in it to kind of increase the HA of the director? I think yeah. we've discussed a lot of things. I don't think that's the design at this point, but certainly we'd love to hear, you know, if you try it, you know, let us know. Um, so for existing installations, so I already have Bosch ah. running on S3. I like to add UAA, and I have everything on RDS. Is there, can I revision Bosch in it and point so, yeah, uh, we, we support old uh, manifest format. So uh, if you deployed your uh, initial directory with MicroBosch tool, uh, we're going to convert that uh, state, uh, deployment state into new format for you if you use this tool. There is a path, yes, to migration, basically, which is what you're asking. Yes. No, it's true. I mean, I'm going to spend all Wednesday with Ben and Jimmy discussing what is the path for Bluemix to migrate to this. Uh, okay. Yes, so, so we're trying. It's no, it's there. It's, it's there. actually implemented. So uh, we, um, we save the state of your MicroBosch VM in, in a specific file. Uh, it's like deployment uh, YAML. And um, if you put your manifest in the same folder for Bosch, for Bosch in it, where this file is, we're going to find it and convert it into new format that Bosch in it understands. Very cool. Thank you. Yeah. cool, thank you. Maybe one last question? Ah, okay. So yeah, there's an uh, environment variable you can use to turn on debugging logs and see uh, more information. Okay, thank you. Dimitri is here. Maria is right here next to me, so come and talk to us. <laughs> thank you.